We are pleased to be bringing you this contest between the Redmen and Mustangs. There's Byrne just knocking the uh, ball over to one of his teammates, but nobody's able to come up with it. Look for a second like Austin Haber had it, but the Redmen just kept working after it. Still down on the ground, has kind of been bouncing around for a bit. Haber once again almost had it. Now somebody else tries to pick it up and Haber denies it from him, then kicks it ahead, but it goes straight to Bradley Hoffman. And McGill is taking a timeout. I was actually wondering if they might, since they had you know, a bunch of, of uh, face-off and defensive players up in the offensive zone, and you get that possession. It's so valuable. You've got a certain number of timeouts to use. You might as well use them, and, and you really don't want to hand it over because you've got a bunch of guys. We've talked about how well the, the long poles of McGill handle the ball, but not compared to offensive guys who have the shorter stick, exactly. and especially not when there are... The, well, the Western long poles would get a crack at them. Yeah, they uh, they did an excellent job of dig, really digging and staying on that ball and come away with that possession call. It almost kind of on the far side here, or sorry, the close side here, it almost looked like Timbits hockey. Everyone yeah. kind of crowding around, racing for the or racing for the ball. Or youth soccer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All just like following. Just a pack like a following piece. the ball, and every once in a while you get a spot at it. Oh, there's the ball. The Western defenders and goalie, Manraj Najjar. Head over. We have an update on Rufus Frost. Apparently it's not too bad. They're saying he's fine. He's probably not going to return. He's got a nice bag on that knee. You might spot him once in a while sitting over on the field. Actually, is the right now I think you can see him. No, over, but he's over on the field just sitting down around the 30-yard line on the grass with his leg extended and ice on it. Mo McGill sets up on the offensive zone. Frustrating way early in the day to end your Begataway Cup championship. I'm sure he's hoping that the conclusion of the day will be much like Curtis Knights was last year as he, as he um, was helped by his teammates into a championship dressing room. Ball pops loose and Western comes up with it. Nice pass ahead there by Jordy Jones-Smith. Crowley running the field. He's going to head back now. Western sets up. So that possession didn't last too long for McGill despite the timeout. Jones-Smith, low pass, skips away from Masterson. And Sam Neeb wanted to go out and get it, but he couldn't quite go on the field yet as he didn't have a... a a, uh, a sub that was coming. He had somebody coming, but it wasn't close enough, and Neeb had to, you could tell he wanted to just step out and grab that ball, but of course it would have been an illegal substitution, and we would have given it right back and got a penalty, so. Yeah, it was, you could tell he was itching on the sideline, <laughs> yeah. kind of almost jumping as the ball came towards him, but. It's like a relay race in swimming where you, you just can't wait to, you're, you want to go, you want to go, but you know you have to wait until somebody gets there. Masterson behind the net, McCrory is down low. He's going to come back up top to where he's more familiar, a little higher. He's actually goal line extended right now. Some tough defense on Neeb. That's Hoskins. Hoskins. Danny Williams over there watching Jordy Jones-Smith on the far side. Now it comes to Emerson who moves it across. Neeb on his offside. Cradling in one hand with Hosking all over him. Trying to reach around and get a stick on the handle. Low on the shaft, but can't do it. Now the ball does pop out. Great strip by Paul Ricosi. He just knocks that ball loose. Now Bradley Hoffman's going to go throw the long bomb and connect. That's a great pass. Yeah, it really was. Bromley stepped up really nicely there to accept that pass. That's a 50-yard pass up to Spencer Bromley by Bradley Hoffman. Right in the basket. Goodwin sends it down low to Bromley. McGill still making a change. Now the last man in the O comes sprinting down. Biela with some momentum. They spin it around, reverse to the far side, and Goodwin makes a complete rotation. Sasson Lawless sw switched hands. Looked like he might have a shot. They come back to his dominant right, and Goodwin will fire. That goes off a defender. McGill will get possession once again. 
Biela's just going to trot up high. So someone Lawless fakes a cut. And then Reese Bernal just sprinted through in front of the, in the slot. Didn't seem like anybody particularly noticed him on either team, actually, as Bernal just kind of made a, a phantom cut. Now Bernal cuts again. He's very quick, Bernal, and he, uh, it seems like his timing's just a bit off. He's not getting to that spot. That's one of the keys for goal scorers is knowing when to cut in. And just that split second, you can see on the last one, he was just, he kind of cut in just as Connor Goodwin was getting the ball and looking at something. He wasn't quite ready to make the pass. Now Goodwin comes out, tries a shot, gets away from him. He bounces it back to Bromley, whose shot is blocked. Nice job by Cameron Lewis on the defensive end. So someone Lawless thought about letting it fly. Now he's going to try and pass to the man down low, and they'll turn the ball over as it got away from Reese Burnell. And Sasson Lawless, you can see him upset with himself as he arrives at the, at the bench because he knows that was a bad pass. He almost would have been better off taking the shot. He had the opportunity yeah. and he hesitated quick and kind of just forced the pass there instead of yeah. handling the ball. Yeah, a lot of pressure. Austin Haber trying to get away from it and eventually he's gonna be able to get it over to Lewis. Lewis has some space and we'll be able to run it over center. And Austin Haber is going to head to the bench and have a bit of a rest after a flurry of activity. Still 3-1 to one as we're just over five minutes into the second quarter of this Begattaway Cup Championship Final. Let me see Vince Stamp with Sawyer Brock. It's great having you alongside and uh, I appreciate it's a little hard for you with your, with your Bishop Skaters being knocked out yesterday, but you've managed it like a pro. I've been doing my best, you know. I had the few slip-ups yesterday calling <laughs> Bishop's wee, but I've been been keeping up. It's actually a really great privilege of mine to be able to work beside you. You're you're very good <laughs> at this job and kind of show me what I would, if I want to do it in the future, kind of what I need to do to be better at it. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's, it's, it's fun. I mean... I can tell you, you're not going to be making, you're not going to become a rich guy doing it. <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. You get yeah, to see some get to great lacrosse. Yourself. And we get, we get about the best seat in the house. We're right on the 55 yard line, yeah. watching this game from up above. And uh, great view, great place to watch. Tom Masterson behind the net, watched by Ricosi, throws it up top. That's Nikolai for Ferris getting involved. Ferris, one of the depth players that you see some of the time taking the odd shift for Western. And like uh, on both these teams' rosters, just because a guy isn't starting doesn't mean he's not a good player. There's a lot of talent on these clubs. What a pass. Oh, yeah. Great save by Weishi. It almost went in. Ryan McCrory tried to tap it home. And Paul Ricosi kind of sat on him after McCrory fell down. And Ricosi does the old lift the hands to show he's not trying to do anything. Yeah. And that pretty much settled his weight on McCrory for another second or so. Yeah, trying and to show the rep that it wasn't an intentional yeah. thing. And <laughs> just, he's just trying to get up. <laughs> Quinton Bradley gets the ball up the field. Hands it off to Bromley, who gives it now to Drew Laird. And you can hear an appreciative fan calling, uh, cheering for Drew Laird. A lot of parents of McGill players here making the trip down from Montreal or wherever they're from. I mean, we've talked about McGill bringing players from all over North America, Canada, the States. I mean... Uh, there, you just look down their roster, you can see it at the Kufla website, kufla.ca, and uh, just go on their roster, and they are from all over the place. Yeah, I, I think about 50% of their team's actually from the United States. Mm -hmm. Laird has the ball up top, and again, the way to go, Drew, cheer. Very loud and proud fan in attendance. Laird's going to cut down, take a shot, and he scores! And Drew Laird with the little skip celebration. He had just two goals during the regular season. He's got a big one here to restore the three-goal lead. I think you could hear the fans in the <laughs> in the stands cheering for him, and he wanted to put on a little show for him. Pretty exciting for a guy like Drew Laird, who, you know, is part of the future of this program as well as the present. But uh, you know, he's not one of the main contributors to the offense this year. And you can see in his excitement, that's a pretty good move. He's going to have to to practice that one and keep it in part, as part of the repertoire because. I like that little backwards skip with the with the swing of the stick. 
But I mean, it's got to be exciting for some of these. You know, the parents are here, and we've talked about it, and they're coming in from from parts, you know, all parts east and west, and north and south, and uh, probably not too many north. No, <laughs> here actually. But uh, you know, it's it's exciting for the parents to get to see their kids performing at a high level in a, in a big championship. Yeah, especially to be able to come watch your kid play in the Canadian Championship. It's pretty yeah. something that's really exciting. That ball's just bouncing around. And eventually, it's scooped up by Cameron Lewis. He's going to throw it over to Najar. Makes a quick pass to Jones Smith. Jones Smith has his defender, Matthew C., turning back and forth. Jones Smith, pretty athletic guy. One of the very quick players on this Western offensive unit. Midfielder and uh, honorable mention all Canadian this year as a midi. And we mentioned he was drafted in the NL into the NLL by the New England Black Wolves. He's a very steady stay at home defender type for the Whippy Warriors in junior. It's yeah. interesting that he plays a solid attack role or like an offense role here for the Mustangs, mm. but in box so across, he is a defender. Too. Yeah. I mean, you see him in the defensive zone here as well, but I mean, just a reminder, Mitch Jasnew, who was actually the 13th overall pick in the draft this year by Calgary, defensive guy, uh, has played two years with the Oakville Rock of major series across. There's Jones Smith. Oh. That's a great cut, the pass from McCrory, but the save by Weishi. And Jones Smith just raises his hands like, oh, I had one. There's a pass out by Weishi. Nice clear. But uh, Jasnew led Kufla in goal scoring this year with 35. He's a defender in box lacrosse. Another guy, Robert Hope, who was actually number seven overall draft pick in the NLL, and uh, is with the Colorado Mammoth and the Peterborough Lakers. He's, a, he's an elite defensive player now. Ne almost never scores. He was a, a, a record-setting attack man at uh, Pfeiffer University, I believe it was, he went to. Pfeiffer or Limestone? There's a lot of universities in the States that yeah. have lacrosse There's, programs. And they all have, like, they, whether it's a D1 or D2 school, all of them have a, a very competitive program, so... Mm. Biela, over to the far side. They start to move it inside. Burnell kind of backs away a bit. Sassone Lawless. You can see the jerseys kind of whipping in the wind. It, it was substantial before the game, and it seems to have picked up. So it's a bit of a factor in the long passing game as well. It doesn't have too much impact in the short game here. Peter Hunt going hard after the ball. Sassone Lawless trying to pick it up. Hunt protecting his position well. Obviously, it was going. It was off of a McGill player because Hunt was just making sure that he uh, that he had that ball protected and nobody could pick it up. He wasn't trying to to pick it up. Now Cameron Lewis gets it. That's a nice little short pass to Patrick McCrory. We've seen McCrory get involved and he is going to run up into the offensive zone, but the pass gets away. I was actually still watching McCrory, but it looks like Masterson may have been cutting towards the net before he had the ball in his stick, sensing that he had a lane. To go and we talked earlier about how sometimes you push a little bit if your transition's not working. There's a shot and a goal. Quinton Bradley makes it five to one McGill, and that is a long pole getting involved in the transition. Yeah. It's a really nice shot by him too. You could see him mm -hmm. winding up, and I think he shot that from about the 35 yard line. I mean, really, really had a nice, nice little bounce shot right between the legs and Najar. Oh, we're gonna have a stick check now on Bradley. The referees do pick a player at random each quarter to at the end of each quarter to, to check, but Western has requested a check on Bradley. And I mean, the, the offensive players generally, I think, are pretty aware since this rule's come in uh, that they need to play with a legal stick because they can have a goal taken away and the stick confiscated for the rest of the game at any time. But the defenders, I'm not sure if they pay quite as much attention. We'll see how the check goes. If it is deemed illegal, the goal we brought back, and we've got Brent Coulomb, the director of officials here, the RIC here. Um, give us the lowdown. So, yeah, they can request a stick check at any time, but if Western's wrong, it'll be a technical foul and they'll lose possession. If they're right, any technical foul or three minute unsportsmanlike will bring back the goal since it's a goal score. Right. And it's a, it's a three minute penalty if it's an illegal stick. If, it, if, it, if it's non fixable, it's right. three minutes. Okay. Oh, but it's fine. So Western will get the technical penalty, and that's 30 seconds? Just a turnover. Just a turnover, okay. So loose ball foul. So the goal stands. McGill is up 5-1, to one and 
they celebrate like he's just scored the goal again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he loves seeing the long poles get the goal. And, and it, it's a little funny for anyone who was watching the semifinal yesterday. Quinton Bradley is number eight. Bradley Hoffman is number 28. They've both been playing with this team for a few years. I've called plenty of their games. And uh, I know the difference between them, but for some reason I was calling Bradley Hoffman Quinton Bradley. And at the end of the day, we selected Bradley Hoffman as our player of the game because he had a fantastic game defensively, face-offs, stepping up. And uh, I talked to them this morning. I saw them at breakfast, and I went and apologized for it. And I said to Bradley Hoffman, sorry, I was calling you Quinton Bradley yesterday. And Bradley was like, hey, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Bradley's trying to, trying to step up and make, make sure that we get him straight today. And he's certainly doing a great job. He's been excellent in the defensive zone as well. I think Bradley may have maybe the best player today in his own zone, and then he's going up and scoring goals as well. Kind of a turnover, and Western will sprint back up the other way. Austin Haber, luckily, he was cutting to the sideline, but slipped through the defenders instead. Nice job to get between Williams and Goodwin. Jordy Jones Smith. Throws it over to Patrick to Ryan Miles. <coughs> Western setting things up. That's not a bad risk. That's that stick check. I think. I mean, if if it is illegal, it's a three minute. If it's non fixable, like uh, Brent Colomb said, a three minute penalty and no goal. So probably worth the risk. No, it's cozy. Especially that. if if. Making the call and they only get it wrong, they just lose a possession. It yeah. it does. It's not. A, they're not losing a lot by requesting that stick check. Spencer Bromley spins, fires it over to Biella. Gutman catches in traffic. Crowley all over him in the slide, coming to help, but Gutman just got out of the way in time before he was blown up. Biella's going to shoot Ooh. that one. Goes wide. I think it may have gone off the stick or leg of Cam Lewis. It looked like it did because it it went about like. It went way wide, wide there. <laughs> and I think Andres Biel is a better shooter than that. Yeah. Went down sidearm, and it really, it really either hooked or, or deflected. Biel gets it back. Jones Smith up on him, and Lewis comes out to turn aside Bromley. Laird and Linton playing catch up top. Bromley down to Biella. This one's right on the target. There's no hook in that. Oh, that's Maxime Murdoch, not Biella. Murdoch with a goal. The freshman getting some playing time and making the most of it. Murdoch, the youngster who uh, you know, was earning some time. He, I, I mean, you grow up with the Murdoch household. You play lacrosse, you know lacrosse, you talk lacrosse, <laughs> so it's no surprise that he can play this game, and he's pretty stoked. He's also made it quite clear to me that he's about an inch taller than his dad. Tim Murdoch <laughs> standing 6'3", Maxime at 6'4". Tim's just got taller hair. Yeah, exactly. Maxime going off on the side there, giving a quick taunt to the Western bench. Yeah, he was talking to the defenders before he left, and then as he gets to the sideline, he was talking to the other side, so six to one. McGill taking a strong presence. We mentioned McGill last year faced this Western team in the semis and beat them 15-6. to six. And uh, I was quite confident. I was talking to uh, Western coach Jeremy to leave before the game and said, I'm betting it's not going to be like last year. I just think this Western team is too good to, uh, to, to not be competitive in this game. But they're going to have to do something to get things turned around because they are not creating scoring chances and, and they're just allowing too many opportunities for McGill. There's a penalty flag on the f on the floor on the field. Yeah, Sasson Lawless was brought down to the ground, way out of the play, and it's definitely going to be it's a good penalty call there because the Western player kind of thought he didn't deserve it, but <laughs> he he took Sasson Lawless out when the ball was nowhere near him. Yeah. Michael Byrne is going to head off and kneel down for the penalty. And Sasson Lawless was really just kind of standing there. Yeah. And burn, burn flatten him. So McGill with a chance to extend the lead even further as we're nearing four minutes to go. And they do. And Ponders Biela fires one low. We talk, he, he, That's a very similar release point to the shot that missed that went off of Lewis and, and down into the end zone. This one finds the perfect spot. Yeah, that was an excellent shot by Biela. Put them up seven to one now. You gotta think Western Western needs to come out and be really hard off this face off and get a good offensive possession because McGill's just slowly 
not they're not making a huge run with it, but slowly they're just inching and inching away from the Western team here. And you know, McGill has been such a strong program over the last several years, and uh, certainly the last five or six years they've been um, among the class of the league. Every year they look so good; they look like it's going to work for them. In 2012, it happened. They beat Western 7-6 in the final to win the championship, but that's their only title. And uh, I mean, saying their only title, you know, winning a, a Bagatelle Cup is a pretty big deal. Yeah. But you know that they are not satisfied with one. They want to win a series of titles. They want to be winning every year, not just competitive every year. You might have to take over for a second because I feel a sneeze coming. Uh, that's okay. So you, <laughs> you may be the man for uh, for a little while. So we'll I see. Can, I went I away for the time being. Here. <laughs> Bradley Hoffman running up near midfield. A little corkscrew check attempt by Cody Ward. And boy, I mean, Cody Ward, six goals yesterday, and we really barely even noticed that he's on the field today. It just shows you how good a job McGill has done of limiting the possession time for the Western Mustangs in the offensive zone. Yeah, they've done an excellent job just shutting down all the big men for Western, and mm. even West and Westerns, that's, that's their strong point. When they get into the offensive zone, that's usually where, they, that's where they showed that they dominated really well over Bishops yesterday, but McGill's doing an excellent job. They, they were here in attendance at that game to kind of check it out and mm -hmm. they they know how Western likes to play and they're they're making sure that they can't do it. Linton running across the top, gives it off to Bromley. Just a little hitch step and then passes over to Laird. Straight back to Bromley. And McGill's been playing a lot of offense and you think, okay, maybe they'll get a little tired, but they are rotating guys through Laird and Linton, playing plenty of minutes along with the guys like Bromley and Connor Goodwin. I mean, Connor Goodwin's not on the field right now. He's having a rest, and this is a long offensive possession that McGill is running, so, so Goodwin's going to be okay. Gutman tried to tap the ball over and does eventually, and Goose Bolton, another guy that we haven't seen a ton of, but makes the most of his time here as he skips that one in for an 8-1 to one lead, and and this is pretty shocking. It is. I, this is not what I expected when I woke up this morning. I figured that we were going to have a very good back and forth lacrosse game here and kind of, I, I figured it'd be a lower scoring game with kind of equal possession on both sides. But McGill right now is just showing that they're definitely the, the stronger and dominant team on the field. Yeah, I mean, eight to one, definitely not what we would have expected. And Western, We'll send Mitchell Drinkwater out to try and to try and win this draw. He's battling against Alex Beckus. Ball comes out eventually. Beckus tries to scoop it up. Nobody can quite get it. A big chop there by Quentin Bradley. There's Bromley. Ten seconds to go in the half. McGill trying to get one last opportunity. Sasson Lawless spins and misses. That'll do it. I don't think they're going to. No, they're not going to get another attempt here as the half ends. But they did get the last chance. And McGill is sprinting towards the, the locker room. And they are pretty excited. And McGill, or Western, is moving very slowly as they all gather over on the far side of the field. Yeah, McGill's on, they're really fired up right now. You just, right at the end of the quarter there, you saw Spencer Bromley and Sasson Lawless almost, almost celebrating like they won the game.